Falk line on the front page of the Business Courier this week, remaking 6th Street. When the Masonette closed in downtown Cincinnati nearly eight years ago, the Queen City lost one of the jewels in its crown. But now, that spot on 6th Street that holds special memories for so many of us is starting a new chapter thanks to local chef David Falk. Falk is relocating his successful and critically acclaimed restaurant, Boca, from Oakley to the former home of the Masonette. In fact, he has thrown his name and reputation into the entire block. He also owns upscale Mexican restaurant Nada at the corner of 6th and Walnut and is opening another spot called Soto, an Italian trattoria restaurant. Soto is uh, set to open at the end of this month and Boca in April. Now, to put this massive deal together, Falk surrounded himself with talent on the creative side, in operations, and with knowledgeable investors, and he had to reinvent himself to be a restaurateur and businessman, as well as chef. We're really pleased to have David Falk with us this morning, joining Business Courier editor Rob Dahlmeyer in the studio. Gentlemen. Brian, thanks. David, thanks for being here. I know you're busy right now. At least I assume you're busy. Got a little going on. Well, uh, Boca is a great restaurant. I uh, have really, frankly, never talked to anybody who didn't like it, and the space is great as well. Why move that? Why shift everything down to 6th Street? Sure. Well, ultimately, you know, the opportunity to take our flagship restaurant, candidly, and move it into the home of the longest-running five-star restaurant, not just in the city, but in the world, uh, was an opportunity we couldn't pass up. And, and being a Cincinnati kid, uh, and then a cook, uh, then going on and working at the Masonette, you know, I, I remember driving down 6th Street and looking in the door and being like, that's the Masonette, you know, and then I remember getting the call from Jean Robert where he said, you know, you're hired, or I should say, you know, you're hired, you know, and uh, doing backflips and like I won the World Series. And so it has special meaning, not just for me, but I think the city as a whole. And so it's, a, it's not only a huge opportunity, but it's a huge responsibility and something that we don't take lightly, which is why we've been spending four and a half years working on it and designing it. It really is a legendary site. Um, you work there, you know that better than anybody, obviously uh, it was important to you, but th that's not the kind of restaurants you have. The Masonette is not what you do. Sure. Uh, matter of fact, hardly anybody does that anymore. What is What happened with uh, cuisine that m had people moving from what the Masonette did to what Boca does? And the prices aren't necessarily much lower, it's just a different ambiance. T talk about that. Well, I think you just saw a difference in uh, in dining over the past couple decades. And, you know, back in the 70s, if you wanted to have a really high-end meal, uh, you pretty much had to go to the Masonette, and there wasn't a lot between. And then, you know, in the 80s, and certainly with uh, the emergence of Jeff Ruby uh, and, and, you know, other restaurateurs, you know, now there became other options. And then you go into the 90s, and all of a sudden you started having other restaurants kind of chip away at the market share. And so our goal is not to take Boca as you know it now and put it into the Masonette and just put another expensive restaurant in the former, you know, expensive right. restaurant. And, you know, I often quote Winston Churchill when he talked about the Ro the Russians, rather. He said, you know, uh, he described them as being, a, you know, a, a, a riddle and a mystery wrapped up in an enigma. <laughs> and that's somewhat of how I feel about this project because while at the same time we want to maintain all of the elements that made the Masonette great and that what we love about Boca, what is important to us, though, is that this be a concept unlike the Masonette uh, and even to, to, to some degree, the Boca now, a concept that is one part iconic, but also something that the city as a whole can really treasure, uh, as opposed to just a select few. And that's really become the great challenge and what we've diligently been working on for the past four and a half years. Last question for you. Uh, being a <clears throat> master of, of food and then being able to do that every day, those are skills that not everybody has. But knowing what a good restaurant should even look like, what the chairs should look like, what the ambiance should be, that doesn't necessarily, to me at least, have anything to do with being able to cook. Does it, or how do you, and how do you transfer what you need to be good at on the physical side? Sure, it's a great question. Um, you know, I've really found that, you know, there's some people who just love to cook. And, you know, for example, my, uh, my culinary director, Jeremy Lee, he's never happier than when he's in a kitchen. Uh, what most people don't know about me is my first love was really the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. And cooking was really a means to get there. I also obviously love cooking and, and uh, love being a chef. But I oftentimes look at, uh, actually, Mozart and Beethoven. I love classical music. And I kind of look at them as inspiration. And uh, while I'm not an expert on both of them, what I do know is that they all started out as pianists. And as they went from pianists, 
pianist where they were playing other people's music, then they started conducting their own music, and then they went on to actually conduct their own symphonies and concertos. And so to me, I draw a lot of inspiration from that. So I don't believe that Mozart or Beethoven were ever good at, cr at creating symphonies if they didn't know how to play the piano. And so to me, they are uh, important. And the last, but, but very importantly, is you just have to love restaurants. I've spent my entire life doing nothing but going and eating and traveling uh, restaurants from design and everything else. And so not every chef maybe wants to be a restaurateur, but this was one that definitely wanted to from an early age. Well, we're looking forward to your new sympathies, uh, symphonies, and we're sympathetic as well. So <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks for being here. Okay, thank Brian, you. Brian, back to you. Nice bounce back. All right, Rob and David.